our guys, uh, uh, credit to our guys, um, the heck of a team. That, uh, <coughs> Illinois is a tremendous team. Tough, tough-minded, um, and well coached. Have, have great competitive spirit about them. Uh, really, really gifted, and talented across the board. So, credit to our guys. I thought they, uh, you know, um, I did not love our competitive spirit to start the game, um, and let them know that. But uh, I thought after after those first five minutes, our guys really brought it. Kyle Young was was tremendous. I thought uh, he was a real matchup problem and. Uh, Stuck his nose in there when uh, you know it's hard when you're guarding a guy that 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 size. So great win, and uh, we'll move forward here to uh, uh, a really tough environment uh, someday at Maryland. Okay, questions here in the room. You got mics on both sides. Just raise your hand. Coach, what's going through your mind there when they when they make that that late run? Of course, I've yeah. um, had a couple of those recently. But and when, what were the keys for you to kind of stave that off there in the end? Well, I thought first of all the the, uh, the environment was um, um, fans were obviously highly engaged. I, I didn't I didn't love what some of the things they were saying to one of our, our players. Um, to be honest with you, but um, I thought that was you know I, I just thought that was completely uncalled for. Um, completely uncalled for, and I'm all, I'm always going to feel like that. I just didn't I just don't don't think there's a place for it. Um, Having said that, they were highly engaged and highly um, uh, involved, and they stayed engaged the entire game, and uh, it was made for a very difficult, difficult finish. Um, and uh, give them credit for, for the environment they created because it spurred their team. And uh, we've got obviously a, a really passionate fan base here, and. Um, um, you know, it was it was it was a tough finish. And give the kids credit too. Now they they made some tough shots. Frazier's, I think, one of the elite clutch shot makers in college basketball. I think he is one of the elite clutch shot makers in college basketball. He is a phenomenal player. Trent Frazier, in my mind, doesn't get enough national credit. I think he is a, I mean, he is a fantastic college player, and he made some some really difficult shots. And Malachi Brown just keeps getting hotter and hotter for you guys. And uh, 31 points tonight. Your thoughts on his performance? Malachi was sensational. You know, he was sensational. He just made great decisions with the ball. Made it very difficult. And playing two forwards together, um, and made it made it, it made it difficult because both both EJ and Kyle can space it. Here in the middle. You seem to really want to attack online ball screens with. Malachi and EJ and Kyle, what went into that game plan and why do you think you had so much success? Yeah, it was, um, you know, we kind of went in thinking that we might do that. It's, it's hard to attack them inside because of Kofi's size and because they have good length across the board. So your guy coming off the ball screen has got to be a real threat or else Kofi's just going to park it in the paint and you're not going to get much. And our greatest guy off of ball screens that's the greatest threat is, is Malachi. So I think our change there at halftime was, was just to kind of ride that and see what came of it. And obviously it, 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 it worked well there early and you know we probably didn't go through it enough late to be honest with you. Kyle Young, just uh, the lift he gave you guys, he started the second half, you must have really liked what he did in the first half obviously, but uh, overall just the lift that he uh -huh. gave you and uh, yeah. defending Coburn and, and uh, also uh, scoring. His competitiveness was phenomenal, just phenomenal. Um, just incredible. Uh, just He just jump-started us, really, Steve, when we needed it. Because, again, give, give Illinois credit. They took it to us those first five minutes. And give them credit. Absolutely took it to us. And we needed an injection of some competitiveness and also some good play, and he brought both. The journey here, five days ago, you lose to Iowa at home, double digits, and some people leave you for dead. and. Then over time against Indiana, and still had something left in the tank here for Illinois tonight. Just uh, what uh, what's going on with you guys right now, and what's left in the next four games? I guess. Well, we'll see. I think you know as well as I do that uh, our group's a really resilient group, and you know, Steve, we've talked about this, and coaches know this. You know, you're gonna you're gonna lose some tough games in this league, uh, home and road. And I give Iowa credit; they beat us. They were tougher that night. Um, 
you got to be able to respond and come ready and try to fix the things that um, but you got to move forward and uh, that's what we tried to do um, and again we played a we played a ter terrific team here in um, in Illinois and we'll see if we can respond here in a couple days and and uh, play well in a very tough environment against a good team in Maryland. Chris, you've seen a lot of great moments from EJ over the last couple of years, but for him to hit two free throws with 30 seconds to go in front of that crowd in particular, with what they were kind of giving him all night, what what does that show about EJ? I it's just he's a tremendous talent, tremendous kid. And he, you know, he, uh, <clears throat> my man was. Uh, my man needed fluids the night after the IU game. You know, he was he was uh, you know going he, he he was in the hospital for you know for a little bit just because of uh, it turned out it was just the flu. But uh, uh, he had some um, just a lot of fatigue. But uh, he he was fine. He was good enough to play. You know, if if he wouldn't have played well, he'd have said, hey, you know, I you know I it's on me. So there would have been no excuses. But uh, give him credit for. Um, Really knocking down those two free throws, which were critical. For him to have to play 34 minutes after, like you said, being that sick and, and giving you what he gave you, and, and to also get it from Malachi, uh, those two guys seem to just feed off of each other more with each time they play. What, what, yeah. what does that tandem? Yeah, what but can that tandem do for you? Yeah, I mean they were good, but you know I think Justin gave us a lift, and Cedric made a big shot, and you know you don't do it without. You know, obviously Kyle Young, who we talked about, uh, Gene did some really good things. So I think, all in all, um, there was a lot of contributions. But um, yeah, I mean, and EJ was he felt well enough to play, or else he wouldn't. Have. So again, there was there was no excuse either way. Coach Alfonso Plummer came out firing early, and he kept it going the whole game. Just how much did that kind of affect your game plan? And, and yeah, we had to change our coverage on him. You know, we thought we had we had had a good game plan for him, but um, he, he's a phenomenal shooter, and he's got such a quick release. Um, their guard tandem, I think, is phenomenal. It's a really, really talented group, uh, especially when you have a guy like as, as talented as Corbello coming off the bench. That's a really talented group. Um, he's a phenomenal, you know, catch and shoot guy, and I think, you know, I think I'm sure that excites Brad and the staff, you know, going into the tournament that you have guards at that level. And um, when you look at um, EJ on the defensive end, he had four blocks. Uh, he's yeah. just, you know, how he does uh, yeah. off on um, off ball help defense. Yeah, um, critical. Those were critical plays because Kofi's so massive. Uh, we had to bring some help, and those were those were critical plays. Yeah, critical plays. Yes, we don't see a lot of nights where Kofi is five for fifteen from the floor. How did you guys disrupt him or kind of knock him off his game a little bit? You know, I think we brought help from a lot of different places. To be honest with you, and he probably missed a couple, you know, that he's normally going to make. Um, but I think EJ blocked two or three of his shots where it was right around the rim. Um, you know, I, I think I think um, he probably missed a couple that he's normally going to make. And then, I don't know what he played, but I think the foul trouble, plus the combination of him having to guard Kyle, probably didn't play in his normal rotation minutes. But, you know, everybody in this league, he's a tremendous player. Everybody in this league has a little bit of an off night. Chris, if you, uh, when you look at this game, I mean, if this one slips away, you know, that, that would be bad, I guess. Uh, to, to get, okay. okay. So it wouldn't be good, but uh, <laughs> to get, <laughs> to get this thing, just get it over, I guess. Once once it starts to slip away, to, to, to finish it off. Yeah, listen, I, I, I get that. I mean, I, I keep reminding people, like, Duke let a lead slip away at our place. Duke's pretty good. You know, I think they were up, what, 14, 15? Like, it happens in college basketball. It's hard. To, you think that team was going to lay down? That team's tremendous. Got tremendous competitiveness and spirit. They're not going to lay down. They're playing at home in front of a fantastic crowd. They're going to make a run. Certainly, we could do some things better. So I, you can't ever look at it, and I understand your question, but you can't ever look like, oh, God, we're doomed. We lost a lead. We're playing a really good team. You kind of survive. You land the plane, and you hope you can you can uh, move forward. You've had uh, 10 games where it's been within one possession in the final 20 seconds. Have you ever been through a season like this? It's been a lot. It's been a lot, and um, more times than not, I feel good about how we finish. But I don't think I have been one with this many close games. 
You and Brad came into the conference at the same time, and you guys have actually built your programs to be pretty successful and had a lot of pretty epic games here in the last couple of years. Yeah. Is this becoming one of the conference's better rivalries, in your opinion? I'll let you guys kind of determine that. You know, we obviously just played a Big Ten championship game, right? And, um, you know, we give them all the credit in the world for when it was a heck of a game. It was an overtime game, I think, wasn't it? Um, so we've had some, we've had some great battles. Uh, he's a tremendous coach. Uh, tremendous coach. His teams compete at a high level. We did come in at the same time, um, and uh, got a lot of respect for him and, and his and his, um, his kids. So, um, you know, if it's a rivalry, I'll let you guys uh, kind of decide that. Chris Tom has said a lot of similar things about Trent Frazier yeah. on Saturday. From a coach's perspective, what, what do you guys see, and what, what can a guy like that oh, mean to a program? He impacts winning at such a high level. He impacts winning. Trent Frazier impacts winning. You're looking for guys that impact one. He competes defensively. He'll guard the best player. Um, he fights on every possession. He he never panics. He makes big shots. He makes the right play more time than not. Um, and he's older, but he's been a good player since he came in the league. I think was this his fifth or sixth year of college? Fifth? Okay. Um, so um, I just got a lot of respect for the kid. And I think he doesn't get enough notoriety. Um, you know, nationally, I just don't. Uh, Ryan Peden, some of us remember from here. Can yeah. you talk about the job that he does for you? Does he get enough notoriety? No, uh, but uh, assistants rarely do. Um, uh, Ryan's fantastic. I think he's one of the terrific, young, up-and-coming uh, assistant coaches. It's going to be a head coach real soon. He's turned down a couple of head coaching jobs that were really pretty good jobs uh, and I'm forever grateful to Ryan for what he's done but unfortunately I don't think I'm going to be able to hang on to him much longer. He's that good and I uh, can't wait for him to be head coach. All right, thank you.